How do you get infected with coronavirus? You get infected with coronavirus um, through respiratory droplets. So if somebody is coughing or sneezing or even breathing deeply around you, that respiratory droplet could come out and all, all you need for it is to get in your mouth or your nose or your eyes. Okay. And they say that actually lingers in the air? Um, there's, uh, they're saying that it, it, it lingers in the air, but I, I, I don't think so. I think it just like, um, uh, other, uh, infections that are spread through respiratory droplets, it might be in the air just momentarily. And then it's, it's not going to stay in the air right. afterwards. Cause you hear six feet. You, you should yeah, keep that's six, cause that's as far as it could fly. Yeah, basically. exactly. So and it's like it, a trajectory. Think like yeah. if I, if I'm talking to you right now, if I coughed or I sneezed, that droplet's going to go about that distance and then it's going to drop. Okay. Why is it spreading so fast? compared to other, you know, typical uh, right. infections? The reason it's spreading so fast, the, the, the reason why, the, uh, why it's so viral is because you end up having no symptoms for a long time. You know, unlike the flu, and that's what's throwing a lot of people off guard, is you can be asymptomatic for up to two weeks. So you can have no symptoms at all, and you're spreading it around to people around you. So the number of people that you're infecting it, uh, like spreading it to, it's already, you know, three or four times more than you would with the influenza or with the flu because you get symptoms right away in one or two days with that. Rex, I did some reading about the comparison of coronavirus to SARS. Right. And, you know, SARS didn't die a natural death. Mm -hmm. But the thing with SARS is that you show very serious symptoms yeah. right away. Right. And once they had these pockets of places that had SARS, people started getting really sick and they... Yeah massively quarantined those areas they mm -hmm. essentially and killed they was off able to that, control it yeah they killed off that that virus by man-made you know heavy-handed tactics right this is a different situation and, and they talked about it, how 25 percent of the people who have it don't show any symptoms and yeah. they're out there spreading it to other people right exactly and that's why it's so viral because you know forgive me but i might be spreading it to vlad right now if i don't know i have it yeah you know what i'm saying yeah no, but um, that's true you know, and being, you know, we're since we're a news media source, you know, we're on the front lines, yeah. you know, taking those risks. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the scary thing for me is like, you know, every day I got to go to the hospital and, you know, the medical staff around me, you know, they could all have it and I don't know they have it. So it just kind of puts me in this situation where, you know, I'm, I'm having to risk my life every single day because there's people dying. There's doctors that are passing away from this. And it's like, as you start coming to learn all this information, I think there's a doctor that just passed away in New Jersey. Um, you know what I'm saying? Relatively young doctor too. And um, at first I was just hearing that it's older people that's, that's actually, you know, getting affected as far as dying from the virus. But, you know, I'm seeing patients in the hospital that are a lot younger and they're getting very like critical and going to the ICU. Well, right. The original doctor that kind of broke the whole story about this in Wuhan ended up dying yeah. from coronavirus. And he right. was a relatively young guy yeah. in his forties maybe. Yep. 